Due to the celebration of 20 active patrons, they could choose any video me to publish for early access and they have chosen how to be a coach. In short, coach is a person that is preparing their team for the next match or matches. Coach is not an in-game role, so don't mess that up with an IGL role. You can imagine coach as an entry in-game role. They will not succeed if they didn't have support in the most situations. Coaches need someone that will bring them numbers, an overall stats of everything in order to fulfill their coaching role. A part of a fixing an issue, for example fixing a strat, is to find where the issue is. And you cannot do that without what reviewing. Some stuff can be found relatively easy, but for the small details you will need to run some numbers of multiple matches to make the strat as good as possible. The biggest issue of a strat is to know how passive or aggressive your team is, and that cannot be done without an analyst. So, in our metaphor, analysts will be the supporters for the entry fraggers, who are coaches. It's worth it to mention that most teams nowadays have one official coach, and the so-called analyst is actually another coach, basically having two coaches instead of one. But enough of that. The main thing over here is, someone has to feed the coaches intel in order them to do the top notch work. Having said this, the background of to be the coach is to know how to do a VOD review. VOD review is not casting the game, VOD review is understanding what is happening behind the scenes, via operators on X and Y places. Why that bulletproof camera on that irregular place? I have done few of them. You can see the playlist of mine in the description. However, these are global VOD reviews. As a coach or analyst, you will be sometimes more into a specific player or players if they are, let's say, playing roaming together. You will want to know how to counter that player or players. Doing reviews of your own team is essential and this all brings to the presentation. If you don't know how to present your stuff, then your coaching won't be as useful. Your job as a coach is all about improving the following segments. Individual skills. These skills are the way of a mate of your risk playing. Are they too aggressive for that kind of a position? Is risking affordable in that situation? Did they play correctly in the one versus x situation? Are their game sense on the point or they should consider to do something else? Was the run out from the aquarium's balcony on the coastline to try to kill someone by the pink or blue bar's window a good move? Was it a good move that you have pushed too aggressively by the CCTV's bomb on bank when the taker started to smoke everything off, where it's too exposed from the hatches? B. Team based skills. These skills are the way how a group is playing. Are they supporting each other enough? Are they watching correct angles? Does everyone have their back covered? Are your teammates trusting each other? How quickly did you get the bank, map control when attacking the basement? Was your locker border plant execution done correctly? Or there can be some micro adjustments? C. Mental state. Is the whole of your team on the same wavelength? How good or bad communication are doing the round? Is your IGL doing a good job? Is there any heat during the round? Is someone of your player underperforming for a while? Are they, overall, approaching to the situation correctly? It is very important to know your teammates. You have to know why are they underperforming. Are there any private issues? You have to talk to them. You're their right hand. Let them know that they can always talk to you and keep this stuff private as much as possible. D. Innovate. Ubisoft doesn't ask. Being able to flow as to the changes is another base thing. When someone brings you all the numbers, stats, graphs and whatnot, you need to do something with them. You're not going to win if you're replicating something, especially when the meta is constantly changing. E. Criticize everyone, but as well as your IGL. Criticizing is not negative. It is very important that your IGL code correctly on how to play in a given situation, on how to read opponents quicker or even better with as little information. IGL is probably the most important role when you're playing, when to rotate, how to deal with that clash plus dog combo, how to retake map control as defender in a free vs free situation on bank to stop the plan is crucial. Giving more insight to your IGL always helps. F. 
you need to have all the IGEL attributes as say in the how to IGEL video. Because when your team ends up in a land, per map, you usually have a timeout. And during that one minute break, you need to feed them with as much clear information as possible to step up. To give them warning what are they playing against. Even if you're not on land, and if you're doing a tactical rehost by unplugging your internet, well, which is done very often in the pro league, this attribute is very important. You basically can coach them during the online match as well. These are all or attributes to be a coach, but how to actually become one? If you don't have a resume or someone to recommend you, there is no point of going above T3 teams. Most of the T3 teams and below do not have a coach, and ask them if they will want to. You will not get paid, but if you are doing good, you will be exposed, therefore you will be asked to go for better teams. You can get noticed by making videos as well, especially strat-like or for the reviews, like reviewing pro league matches and publishing them. To sum it up, but we are not done yet. To be a coach, you need to be able to improve someone's individual skills, as well as how your team approaches to the situation. You need to work with the chemistry and the communication between you guys. Figure it out if and why someone underperforming. You will have to innovate, innovate a lot. Make something new out of nothing. You will have to criticize your IGL or IGLs. And you will need to be an IGL yourself during the timeout and online matches. Let's imagine that you also have to do the analyst job and that you will also be doing loads of vote reviews, that means you'll be able to say next. How does the enemy usually play? Do you need to play more like monkeys on maps like coastline, or should you bunker yourself more like on the clubhouse base when defense, or should you consider to use the infamous SSG 100% win strat? Do they have a weak point in a strat? Are they heavily holding aviator and games when defending statuary and trophy? Do you push from bedroom with having a person watching that no one goes in or out from the objective? You'll have to exploit their weaknesses, and that is all on you. During the game, IJ calls if the plan changes. To do the previous, you will definitely need to go into the numbers on maps, rounds, and even objective independently, sometimes even operator if doing a counter strat, like operator bans. The best example would be knowing in which three maps, assuming you're playing best of one, are your opponent the best. Those maps will most likely be your banning maps, therefore you won't prepare them. Now you can also check the correlation between the opponent's map bans with the percentage of their win-loss ratio and take out one or even two more maps out of the preparation. And then you're left with two maps to prepare instead of seven. Example, if you're on a play day 10, that means 9 matches have been played so far, and Team Empire banned Villa 6 out of 9 times, whereas 1 Villa 1 out of 3 times, 7 to 5 round difference. There is a huge possibility that Team Empire doesn't know how to play as efficiently on Villa as on the other maps. You will definitely have to consider other factors, such as are they preparing for the other tournaments, majors, or something else. Speaking of Pro League format, this comes very handy when there are only 5 out of 7 maps available to be played, because maps that teams played on the previous playday cannot be played. So you can actually know with 95% which map are you going to play. This was just one out of those examples for the importance of the numbers. There are a few more stuff, especially in the vote reviews, but to sum the analyst part of the job, in case the team requires you to do the job, You'll have to know how to play with the Excel, because when you put all the needed factors, you need to do a few graphs and to see the actual results. Just the numbers are not going to tell you a lot. Graphs will do. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any feedback, let me know down in the comment section below. If you would like to support me, drop me a like, subscribe and click the notification bell not to miss any video from my channel. Make sure to join my Discord server and follow me on Twitter.